Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mary, though on Instagram and YouTube, I'm known as Muslim Convert Girl. I am super excited to make this video because I've been a huge fan of Muslim Convert stories for quite some time. I definitely remember a lot of long nights binging their videos. They have such great content, so I'm super, super, super grateful and super excited to make this video and um, share my story of how I went from an atheist to a Muslim. So to give you a backstory, my parents never believed in pushing religion on their kids. It's me and my three brothers. My dad was raised Catholic. I would say he identifies as a Christian and my mom never really had any particular religion. She was kind of just generally spiritual. She didn't really follow anything in particular. Now I have mixed feelings on whether or not you should be like forceful with religion with your kids. There are pros and cons. So the pros are it's a great and powerful thing to allow your child to pick what is right for them and their beliefs. Now there are definitely cons, of course. Um, I didn't have the easiest childhood as I'm pretty sure everyone can relate. So it was difficult to deal with some of life's challenges without any belief system to kind of fall back on. Sometimes I would see very religious friends and family um, who received a lot of comfort and guidance and direction from their religion. And I kind of longed for something like that, especially when I was kind of having like an existential crisis in my early 20s. Though I longed for it, I knew it was something that would never really work for me. I could get behind the idea of God and like a creator, higher power, that sort of thing. But the Christian line of belief in certain ways just didn't really resonate with me. A lot of it didn't really make sense to me. So I really couldn't accept it or follow it, even though I really think it's a beautiful religion with many wonderful followers. So I grew up in a family of scientists, which definitely influenced my thinking in terms of being like an atheist. My three brothers, mashallah, are insanely brilliant. Um, the one I was closest to growing up was very involved in the sciences to the point where he's actually an astrophysicist now, which is really cool. He challenged my thinking on things a lot. He was very scientific in his way of thinking. And I got to the point where it felt like I would have to live in delusion to believe that there could be something greater than us that created us and that there could be something after we die. Now, my biggest influence, I would say, growing up was my best friend, Shireen. So Shireen's Muslim, and I can honestly say that without a doubt, if it wasn't for her in my life, I would never have become Muslim. And the thing is, she never really talked about it. She was big on not being preachy, on not being pushy or giving like, like unsolicitedly, is that a word? proselytizing, you know? She's always been big on that. It actually wasn't until like a year or two after I met her that I even knew she was Muslim. I wanted an excuse to call her. So I was like, hey, it's Christmas. Can I call Shireen? And so I called her to say Merry Christmas. And she said, oh, we actually don't celebrate Christmas. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Okay. And she explained that she was Muslim. I was like, hmm. I, I didn't really know much about Muslims at that age. I was around nine years old. Alhamdulillah, she's been my best friend uh, since I was nine, even to this day. What had an astounding effect on me was her character and who she is. And she truly shares so many characteristics of the Prophet, peace be upon him. She's non judgmental, she has extreme integrity, she's unconditionally kind to all people and all animals, especially. And she never once treated me differently because I was not Muslim. There's a quote that I love and I think is so true. It's, um, wait right now. Non-Muslims don't read the Quran, they read you. And that is so, so, so true. Another example is my other best friend in high school. I'm gonna name him Ali because I don't know if he want me using his name in this. So we'll just call him Ali because that's like one of my favorite names anyways. So he quickly became my best friend. He also never preached Islam. He's also simply one of the best men, best people I've ever met in my entire life. His character is outstanding. Like blatantly does the right thing, even when it's hard, unshakable ethics and character overall. He had a very, very difficult life and just fared it so beautifully and with, with such grace. And what I love most about him 
honestly, looking back, was a lot of the characteristics that he had in common with um, the Prophet, peace be upon him. Or just the trend. I think there might be a reason why we're told to emulate the Prophet, peace be upon him, and strive to be like him. So I guess the next piece in the timeline would be um, college. So I had a severe existential crisis when I hit 20 to the point where it would literally keep me up at night. The next person who influenced me the most in this period of my life that actually honestly kind of tilted the needle towards Islam from atheism to like generally believing in something was my atheist history professor, weirdly enough. SubhanAllah. He was so knowledgeable and so respectful of Islam. He even did a talk on misconceptions of Islam, which I attended. In that talk, he basically took a lot of the controversial surahs from the Quran and explained the meaning and the history and everything behind it. He explained how Islam was actually very forward-thinking when it came to women and in general how forward-thinking it was because at that time a lot of people really arguably saw Islam or people, you know, Muslims as backwards people. He had lived in the Middle East for a time and actually knew the Quran front and back because he knew Arabic and he went line by line by line to translate it to English to have a full understanding of it, which, mashallah, I think a lot of Muslims haven't even done something like that. Inshallah, one day I would do something, I'll do something like that. And so the way he described the history of it made me see how logic based it really was. So like, for example, pulling up my little list here, he mentioned like washing five times a day during a time when no one knew about pathogens, like that wasn't a thing back then. It really prolonged their life, like their the focus on hygiene, not eating pork because of how deadly it was. And one of the biggest things for me was that that he kind of changed my my thought on was the concept of sin. That was one of the I guess the blockers of my belief in religion because for the life of me, I couldn't understand how this all powerful, all loving God would be personally affected by you or one of us doing something sinful, right? So my professor explained that sin came from sans, which meant without. So when you commit sins, you are put in hell, which makes sense because sans means without. So when you do something sinful, it means you're without God. And being without God would be like the worst hell, essentially. And then later on, I took notice that all of these things that are considered sins are things that can easily just like taint your soul. You know, it's kind of like human's kryptonite and can really consume your focus and your life in such a way that it would pull your focus from God or spirituality or, you know, that sort of thing. So during this time, I had asked Shireen how she could be Muslim and still be a scientist. She's a scientist, by the way, mashallah because she's absolutely brilliant and she's extremely rational. She said she had looked hard into it and determined it was a belief based on logic. And then I started to do this thing where I would send her a little text if I found something that was like in line with Islam, like in my little like scientific studies or um, like just research on whatever. So like, for example, uh, for a time I was into intermittent fasting and I was looking at all the benefits and everything. And I was like, like, there's so many, as I mean, I'm sure all of you know, like y'all have known before all the rest of us, like y'all were privy to that way before the rest of the world was, mashallah. But the benefits of fasting are insane, like insane, just all kinds of good things. So I would send her stuff like that and be like, ah, the Muslims were right again. And then in recent years, a couple years ago, I got into a talk with my very, very dear friend, Jenna, who's a beautifully devout Christian. We love talking about philosophy and religion and psychology and just everything. We have amazing talks. And when she would talk about Christianity, we would discuss that, I would always bring up Islam and like the beliefs and different things with that. And so she would ask me a lot about that too. And then I looked more into it. And then I started to think, wait, is this Islam thing like a me thing? So overall for me, it wasn't in oh, here are all the beliefs of Islam. I will now adopt them. That's not what happened with me. Though, that's how it worked for you. Spanala, that's awesome. 
for me, it was a slow grow belief system where I kind of gathered my beliefs over many years. And then I looked into the core beliefs at the right time, Alhamdulillah, to realize that, oh, these are actually all the things that I already believe in and have believed for quite some time now. So I did my Shahada alone, um, just in my bedroom. And I ended up doing the, I guess, like more official Shahada in a, in a masjid the first night of Ramadan of this year. So April 1st, which was awesome. So anyways, that is my convert story. Thank you so much for listening. And Muslim convert stories, thank you so much for um, letting me share my story.